right, so let's see if this actually works. I'm going to assume yes. All right, um, if you guys can hear me, um, go ahead and chat and let me know that you can. So I, I see one, two, three, four, five of you here. Okay, good. Yeah, I can see your chats. Very good. Um, <clears throat> can you guys tell that I'm running something a little bit different than normal? Does it sound uh, better, worse, about the same? Oh, quieter. Let's see. Let me try to boost it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, does that make it sound louder? Okay, how's that? Is that better? Um, could I use a little bit more of a boost? Let's see. Let me just try playing... Um, Boost it up a little bit more. Let's try that. Okay, so I've boosted it up a little bit more. Is that still okay? Does that sound okay? <clears throat> Even louder? Okay. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Good. So what I figured out is that they have a, uh, a little widget that you can use to boost the um, the quality. So hopefully this will sound and look better. Does it seem like it's running better than it did last time? Okay, well good. I like to make sure that you can uh, that you get the best quality as possible. So, all right. So today, um, my my thought was to talk about string crossing. Unless you guys have something else that you'd like to talk about, uh, you guys let me know. Is there a, a topic that you'd like to talk about besides string crossing, or would you like to just talk about string crossing? And then we'll go from there. Okay, so uh, Quest is excited about string crossing. How about the rest of you? Fine with whatever, that's good. Okay, then string crossing it is. Um, let's see. Why don't you guys tell me how good you are at string crossing? And if there is anything in particular that you feel like you could use help with on string crossing specifically. And let's start from there. So a string crossing specifically is like, uh, I usually use this example of the, uh, the partita. Okay, so um, let's get from, from those of you who are good at string crossing. Uh, how do you physically string cross? What is it that you're doing? So let's say I want to go from the A string to the D string. Tell me what it is that you're doing physically to get from the A string to the D string. And let's see if we can narrow it down and really pinpoint what the technique is. Okay, at this point you do it without thinking. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, string crossing Vivaldi's Winter. Boy, uh, it's been a while. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I think I know which one you're talking about now. It took me a, took me a second there. Um, so, okay, well, let's break it down. Let me talk you through it, and then maybe we'll do a few examples. So, um, do you guys have your instruments with you? Do you want to do this uh, at home without, without me hearing you, so you can do whatever you want? Uh, but I would like you to get at least your bow out, so you can feel what this feels like. Okay, so yeah, go grab, your, go grab your violins and your bows, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about how this string crossing thing works, at least the way that I do it, and let's see if you guys have any ideas, and, and try to pool our ideas together. So specifically, we're talking about how to make it clean so you're not hearing this. You don't want to mix the two strings. Now, uh, beyond that, once we get this, this um, basic technique down, then you got the, uh, the, the double string crosses, crossings, meaning that you go from, or rather, I guess it's jumping from one string uh, over another string, to, like from A to G. Much harder to do than the uh, the A to D or D to G. So, uh, so we have, and in some cases, which is really hard to do. I don't I don't know of too many that go back and forth, but it is uh, it is still string crossing in that case. All right, um, everybody have your violins and bows. If not, uh, I'll give you just a couple more seconds while we figure out a good um, a good example. Okay, so. Uh, I have a friend, Adam DeGraff, you guys may know him, he uh, did a, this fiddle competition a while back, it was um, Sweet Child of Mine, maybe you guys are familiar with that, maybe not, but if you are not familiar with it, then, um, then go ahead and, and look up Sweet Child of Mine and you'll probably find it on there. Uh, it kind of starts off like this. So it's 
basically, it's pretty easy, but um, it's that first jump from the C down here to the C up here. That's where you can get into a lot of trouble because it happens a lot during that, that um, piece. Uh, so um, see if you guys can get from the bottom C to the top C. So I'm doing a, a second finger, so this middle finger on the G string right here. And then I'm going up to the first finger, second position on the A string. Okay, so you guys, if you can't if you can't figure this one out, that's okay. Just just watch. But if you can, I want you to try this. Okay, and try going from over to the and back. And you see how I'm intentionally pausing. See if you can get that nice and clean, so that you're only hearing one note at a time. So um, you should only be hearing one sound, and we're also stopping our bow in between. Now to get a little bit uh, better at the string cross, what we're going to do is start to shorten the amount of time, that, that amount of space that we're taking in between the first and the second notes, okay? Like this. Okay, so I want you guys to try that. Try that with me. Here we go. Ready? And... Okay, so let's talk about what's actually happening here. Uh, someone mentioned the arm. Yeah, uh, Quest mentioned arm. And so when you get from the one to the other, so let's say we start on the D string and you're going to the A string, here is the motion that I'm doing. I'm actually, instead of moving my, my wrist or my fingers, I'm actually just dropping my arm. Okay, so like this. Drop my arm. We've talked about this before where you want your wrist to be relaxed and if your wrist locks up, that's one of the first things that can really screw up your, t your uh, ability to string cross. So don't use your wrist, use your arm. Now when you want to get from the A string back up to the G string, okay, then you want to do the same thing in reverse, meaning that you lift your arm. So your, your wrist and your hand still relax, just lift your arm. Also very important to make sure that before you lift your arm or before you drop your arm, your bow is stopped, okay? Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's try to narrow it down. And by the way, feel free to write questions. I'll, I'll keep checking the chat. But if I don't see any chat, then I'm gonna assume that you guys are following along with, with me with your violins and bows. Okay, so let's cut the, uh, the space even shorter, okay? So something like this. Okay, we almost have no space, but as you're hearing yourself play, concentrate on hearing only one sound. There should not be any bleed of any of the other strings going on here, okay? Now, uh, let's try eliminating the space, and let's just do it nice and smooth, like this. Okay, so now that we've tried that, go ahead and, and finish trying it. I'll give you a couple seconds. And then now that we've discussed the technique and how to actually do it, tell me how you did. How is, how is this, this experience for you? Are you finding anything in particular that's difficult? What is happening? Because I can't hear you, so I'm going to have to rely on you chatting. Your bow is bouncy, okay? What else is happening? Tell me what else is happening besides your bow being bouncing. And we'll go through the individual points that you are raising here. I want to make sure that I, I can explain to you what I think might be happening and see if I can help you correct it. So um, while everybody else is thinking, I heard D when playing a little faster, okay? That's, uh, that's, that's kind of what I was expecting, and that's okay. So you've got a bouncy bow, sort of expected. Um, hearing the D, pretty expected. Same here, okay, so you're hearing the, the D. Okay, so let me see if I can replicate. Oh, it's a clean jump, however, when I get to the other string, I can't get it to just play, okay? All right. Sorry I'm late, but when I do that, sometimes I hit both strings. Okay, good. So I think you guys are running into just the normal things that happen, all right? So for example, when your bow is bouncy, I'm going to bet, Quest, that you're using your wrist. So when you get from the G string to the C string, I want you to stop 
before you play the next note. So you just play the first note and then get to the next note and stop like this. Okay? And then once you get there, I want you to wiggle your wrist. Just wiggle your wrist. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me, let me, uh, okay, there you go. So wiggle your wrist and make sure that it's still soft, meaning that it can still uh, flex or it can still um, bend. All right? So let's try it, try it like this. And just make sure that it's nice and, nice and uh, relaxed. Okay, everybody trying that? Okay, and once you've done that, I want you to go from the C, the top C, this one right here, when you do an up bow, and then stop on the lower C like this, and then wiggle, okay? Make sure you can wiggle. And then uh, once you've been able to do that a few times, and you know that your wrist is nice and wiggly, and still, still relaxed, then I want you to try it um, where you do this, wiggle, 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 okay? Um, and let's see if, uh, let's see how that is. Is that helping? Does that, can you tell that your wrist is either locked or it's relaxed? For any of you, what, what's happening? Are you able to, to uh, wiggle your, your wrist or is it locked? What's happening? And I think in future lessons, this will be a lot easier once I can actually turn the webcam back to you so I can see what you're actually doing. But for now, I'm just going to have to guess, I think. And that's okay. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay, kind of locked. So uh, if your wrist gets locked, one of the things that um, Suzuki will teach you is to take to drop, put your bow down and just practice this motion right here. Um, it looks kind of funny if you did this in public, like if you're sitting on, you know, sitting outside and people are walking by and you're doing this. But it, you know, as far as your practice is concerned inside of your practice room and your own privacy, you can certainly do this and not have any weird looks. Okay, so just let it be nice and relaxed. And then when you put your bow into your hand, try to do the same motion. Okay, don't drop your bow. Let your fingers just be flexible and and um, grip, or at least uh, hold the bow without dropping. But then still feel that how that feels. Okay, then as you're doing this. Try to get it down onto your strings. Now this is going to feel a little bit different, but once you get it onto your bow, I mean onto your uh, your string, then I want you to still try to wiggle it there. Okay? And if you're not sure what's going on, if that's the right feeling or not, try to do it in reverse. So you go from this motion back up here to this motion where you're just nice and relaxed. Okay? And then you take your bow away and just just feel that wrist just being nice and relaxed. Okay, your wrist was tense for whatever reason, better stretch a bit before playing. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, there are some stretches you can do, and in fact, I think Andrew might have talked about this on Wednesday. But um, if you just take your fingers and just very, very gently bend them back one at a time like this, just hold it for about five seconds, and then back down. Okay, next one, five seconds, bend down. You're going to notice I'm going to turn my hand this way when I do my middle finger, just so that we're clear that I'm not pointing it up. Okay, back down. Up, back down, up, back down. Now it's very important to stretch. I've actually run a half marathon before, and if you don't stretch before a half marathon, then you run the half marathon, and then you don't stretch afterwards, bad things can happen, including not being able to get up the next day. So I had, I had kind of stretched, but I didn't stretch very well. And so uh, don't make the same mistake, especially with your smaller muscles. You can do a lot more damage to them. Uh, your leg muscles recover, you know, after a while. Your finger muscles, you can actually do permanent damage. So just be very careful, okay? Not not to be not to scare you, but just be very aware that your your fingers need to be flexible. Now the other one you, stretch you can do is if your hand is up like this, and you just bend the knuckles down like this for five seconds, okay? And I'm just going to do it kind of quickly, but it's this kind of motion here, all right? And it is important. In fact, some people they major in um, in therapy, music therapy where they're helping people who have issues with their hands or their fingers or their wrists or their arms to be able to uh, handle practicing without hurting themselves. So this is an important skill. Just make sure that you have your hands nice and relaxed. You should be able to wiggle them like this, right? Maybe do this a few times. And um, then you should be good to go. Now, now that we've done that, I want you to see if you can try to do that nice, relaxed wrist motion again. And then you want to transition it into with your bow so that your hand is holding the bow, and you can see how this is, actually take a look at your arm and your wrist and see what it looks like, okay? Do you see how that looks and how it feels? Try to pair those together in your mind, both what it looks like and what it feels like. And you want to get it to your, your, um, your, your violin and just let it be nice and relaxed, okay? Now this is what it looks like on mine. I don't know what your 
bone structure is like or you know how long your arms are or anything like that. So it may look a little bit different to you uh, than what you're seeing on my screen. But this is how I do it. Okay? So then when you go into the, the string crossings. Okay? Now I was hitting the D string just a little bit there. Um, but, uh, but you couldn't really hear it, I don't think. Uh, but you do want to get as little bit of that D string as possible. Okay, so there's the first thing. So that was a, uh, a little bit of, of bow bouncing that usually happens if your wrist is locked. So just keep it nice and relaxed. So what other things are happening to you as you're trying this, this exercise? Okay, good. So much, much better. Now I think in your case, Quest, it probably was that you were locking your wrist. And that was, that's what was causing your bow to bounce. Okay, who else wants to, uh, wants to weigh in here? Um, let me just take a quick look up here on the chat. I think someone said, oh yeah, so hearing the D. Uh, tell me how much of the D are you hearing? Is it like this? Like that? Is it that much? Or is it more like... Okay, uh, what about that second one? Okay, what if, is it more like... I'm trying to mess it up, but it's kind of hard for me to, let's see. Like that? Is it where you just hear it at the very tail end of the, of the note before you switch? Like that? Yeah, I think that, um, that it will help. And now, when you, uh, when you do this motion, you should look at where your arm is when you're on the G string. Okay? And then you look where your arm is when you're on the A string, comfortably on the G string so that you're not hearing the, other, the D string when you play it. Comfortably on the A string so you don't hear the D when you're playing on it. Now that's as far as you want your arm to go. You want to get all the way to where, that, where your arm was, not any, long, and not any farther, and not any closer either. You want to get right to that spot. Just like on your left hand, you want to hit the exact spot to make your intonation perfect. You also want your arm to be able to move to the exact positions so that it's, um, it's perfect. And once you do that, then as long as your arm goes to the right spot and you're pulling, you're just, you know, your wrist is relaxed, your fingers are relaxed, and your arm is just going to that one spot, guess what? You will hit that same string in that same position and you will not be hearing the other strings. Okay, so it makes a little bit of sense, but it's one of those things you kind of have to boil down to the very basics just so that you have a good idea of what it is you're trying to do when you're practicing because practice time is where you can break it down and really figure out the mechanics really figure out the physics going on here okay um, okay so let's go back and let's uh, let's see if you now if you do hear the uh, the D string at the very end of your string string crossings after each note like this Does anybody have a good recommendation for how I can clean this up? How do I get rid of that sound at the end of my, my stroke? How do I get rid of that? Because it's kind of annoying. But we have to think, so think of the, uh, the, the physical reason for why I'm hearing the D and then what I can do to get rid of that sound. Because at some point you're going to have that happen to you when you're practicing. What can I do to get rid of that sound? Uh, spiccato. Okay. So, Unfortunately, you're going to hit the D string at some point. In fact, you, you sort of have to. You can't warp, your, you can't warp your, your bow across the D string without touching it. It's, just, it's not possible. Because if you look at your violin, it's arched, right? So if you're rolling your, even if you're uh, really fast at it, in slow motion, you're still going to touch the D string. It doesn't matter. There's no way that you can do this properly without, doing, without hitting the D string, unless you try to do this. And I absolutely recommend against doing that. You want your bow to stay on the string, which means it's going to hit the D string. Okay, so, uh, so let's make sure that we're clear on that. When you do a string crossing, the string in between, you are going to hit it. Let's see. Uh, you didn't, so uh, separating, separating the bow while you change strings. What do you, what do you mean by that, separating the bow? So I am switching directions, but what does that mean for this D string, because I'm touching it. I am going to touch it at some point. So how do I make sure I don't hear the D string while I'm touching it? What do you do? And if one of you can answer this, I think this will be easier for the rest of you to, to grasp onto. Okay, lighten the pressure. Now, 
Now, lightening the pressure, you can still hear the D. It's not as prominent, but you can still hear it if I'm just lightening the pressure. Yeah, so uh, what Diego Ram is, says is, is actually the correct answer. It's not, it was not meant to be a trick question, but it is one of those things you kind of have to think about. So in order to cross a string without hearing it, your bow has to be stopped, which causes issues if you're not supposed to be stopping the sound. Because if I do this, but it's supposed to be a smooth sound, then if I'm stopping my bow, how can I still get a smooth sound? It almost sounds like these are two conflicting commands. One is stop your bow when you're crossing the D string, and the other is keep your bow moving so you can hear the sound. So what is, what is the secret here? Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, so stopping the bow, um, minimize the stop, and actually that's what we started off with, was that, that exercise I had you guys do, where I had you make a, a big pause, and then I started to minimize that. So the, the, um, the truth of the matter is, you are going to cross the G string, and you are gonna have to stop your bow. Even if it's supposed to be a continuous sound, you have to stop your bow. But through, through practice and um, through paying attention, you can minimize that stop such that the, you and the audience can no longer tell that there's actually a stop. You just, you just squish it so far down that it's still happening, but no one knows that it's happening. Okay? So, so in a, an exaggerated way, it would be going from this to 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 So, so it's, it's me memorizing exactly where it is in my arm that it's supposed to be, relaxing these so they don't screw it up, and then making sure that my stop, I've practiced my stop so that that amount of time in between is just so small that you can't even hear it anymore, okay? Questions, comments, concerns? Um, let me know what it, what it is that's uh, going on in your minds as I'm telling you this. And especially, if this is a new concept, I want you to tell me that it's something that you've never considered before. Because I, I hope that what I'm telling you is not something that you, that you already know, or, or it's, it's something that's helping you, that it's not just wasted time. I want to make sure that these are techniques that are useful to you. So, um, so you tell me. What, what, uh, what's your observation, your questions, comments, concerns about this? It helps, definitely. Okay. Anything else? What other, what other observations do you guys have? It's very useful for you. Okay, uh, there is, you're gonna have to spend time doing this. You're gonna have to just spend time doing it. And you can make the gaps as long as you want. Like if you really are not comfortable with string crossing, just take the time that you need. Just stop your bow, make sure you get all the way to where your arm is supposed to be, pull it again, stop, move your arm, pull it again, stop. Okay, I used to think I had to separate it, but it is great to know the real technique. Practicing the technique is really great. I am learning the Bach double. Oh yeah, that is absolutely true. Um, <laughs> Now, in the Bach double, you actually have an advantage. And the advantage is you're actually supposed to stop the sound. Instead of... That would make it a lot harder. Right? Because otherwise, you might, you know, when you're first learning it, you might, it might sound like this. So if you're hearing that... It's time, to, it's time to slow down, practice it, stop, move, stop, move, stop, move, stop, move. It's going to be kind of boring for a little while, but you got to be able to do it exactly right at a certain speed until you can speed it up. is what matters. Not your wrist, not your fingers, it's your arm. Okay? It's maybe a little bit different than what you guys are used to, where you might have thought when you're watching somebody play, oh, it's all on the wrist. Now, I can kind of do it, but there are a couple things that happen when you rely on your wrist. Okay? Number one, your sound sounds like pinched. It sounds like it's like this, right? right? When you speak like this, it sounds like you're pinching the sound because your wrist is so concentrated on stopping at weird angles, it's just gonna cut off the sound, okay? 
That's one of the first things that happen. The second thing that happens is you get really, really tired. You can do that a few times and then your arm is basically, like your wrist is basically done. Okay? So uh, don't make that mistake. Make sure that it's your arm that's controlling the motion, that you memorize where it is on your arm it's supposed to be. And um, here's a tip, guys. There are only four strings. So if you're holding your violin at the same place when you're practicing and when you're performing, you only have to memorize four different spots. It's really not that hard. You just practice going from here, E string, A string, D string, G string. Get those different spots figured out in your mind. Then you can practice going from, um, from one string to another, whether they be adjacent strings, or hopping one string, or even hopping two strings. The arm uh, height that you're taking is exactly the same as it was when you were just measuring it out for each of these strings, okay? So uh, you have four positions to memorize, and it's really not that bad. And then once you have that down, you can go from any string to any string, starting off with big gaps, and then uh, decreasing that gap until you can do it uh, without hearing the notes in between, okay? So other questions or comments about this? Um, I think string crossing is one of those things that people get nervous about, especially when you're in a concert and you're like, oh no, I don't want anybody to hear my notes in between, so I've got to make sure I stop my bow. And the very first thing that's probably going to happen to you is you're going to start relying on your wrist, and then all of your practice with your arm just gets thrown out the window. So uh, keep your wits about you um, when you get nervous, and actually at some point, maybe, uh, maybe next time we have a lesson, I'll uh, do something on nerves, have, being able to control your nerves. I don't know if you guys would appreciate a lesson on that, but I certainly could have used one when I was younger, when I would get really nervous on stage. Um, okay, let's see. Um, string crossing between adjacent strings. Okay, what about when from A to E uh, do we move, sh move shoulder or wrist? From A to E? Okay, so uh, if, you're, if you're doing it, you raise a very good question, because now we're going to talk about adjacent string crossings, and there is a slightly different rule for that, just, just slightly. And in fact, in the case where I have the, that motion where you're going between them, but they're all adjacent, all of these motions are adjacent, and you have to do it really fast, that is an exception to the rule of the wrist. So uh, let's see if I can explain this one. And you guys tell me if, I, if this doesn't make any sense to you. Um, but here's, here's how I usually do it, okay? So, okay. Um, yeah. Like that. Is that the preludium that you're thinking of? I think it is. I haven't played it for a while. Um, but something like that. Um, so when you're, when you're doing it with those, I think that this rule does apply for adjacent strings where you're stopping and moving your arm, moving your arm, moving your arm, moving your arm. Move. It is still the arm. For me, it's still the arm because I want, I do not want to wear out my wrist, so I want to use my wrist as little as possible. And especially in this case where I'm able to stop my bow and move, it's the arm, not the wrist. It's the arm. The arm will make it as easy as, uh, the easiest way possible so that you can just keep doing it over and over again. Okay, hopefully that helps. Should we practice the same arm technique for double string? Um, so let's see, can I think of, um, uh, I'm trying to think of one that's a good, can you think of a song that you're playing that has double, doubles for double strings? If you can, let me know, maybe I can uh, show you something for that. Um, the Allegro part. Let's see, um, that, that, uh, When you're playing it faster, I think that's where we're going to change our technique a little bit because now you have so little time and the motion, uh, your horizontal motion is so small that uh, you can actually allow for a little bit of a dip te technique. Let's see if we have enough time to, to explain this. I only have a couple minutes. But in this case, if you're moving between two strings very quickly, here's what I recommend. And this is kind of my own theory. I don't know if this is the best theory, but this is the one that I use. When, I, when I'm playing between the A and D string, for example, I actually put my arm in between the two. So if I'm comfortable, normally comfortable here on A string and normally comfortable here on D string, so let me move my arm so you can see this. So uh, A string, D string, A string, D string. Then I stick it right in the middle. And now I'm going to let my wrist do, a, or actually it's my, more my fingers, I'm gonna let my fingers do a little bit of work 
to get it over to the D string and then drop it down to the A string, up to the D string, down to the A string, up to the D string, down to the A string. Now my arm is not moving. It's not going anywhere. So even though I'm string crossing, I'm not moving my arm. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because um, there's just not enough time for me to move my arm over and over again. So if I'm trying to go really fast and I'm trying to just do it with my arm, it looks kind of ridiculous if I'm doing it you know, with my arm. It's better to use the smaller muscles for the smaller movements. And that's actually where your wrist comes in handy. So uh, if you look at this, when I'm doing it slowly, I'm still using my arm. Now, however, when I speed it up, it gets harder and harder for my arm to keep up with the, the horizontal motion, the, uh, the actual sound that I need to make, the speed of the notes. So as it gets to this point, now I, what I'm doing is I'm just sticking my arm in between the two positions. So it's like, it's like halfway in between, it's like right here. And then I'm just letting my wrist kind of bounce up and down with my fingers doing the work a little bit. So I'm just doing this little motion here, you see it? Where I'm kind of curling my fingers and then letting them go, curling, letting go. And that's how you're able to do it really fast, is just with your fingers. So your fingers take on the, the, uh, the actual movement where you're memorizing where your fingers are and then allow your wrist to still be relaxed. That's, I, just, I prefer it that way. There are some cases where you need your wrist, but in this case, I don't think you do and then keep it relaxed, move your fingers, and then keep your arm in the same spot. And uh, one other thing that's, that's important here is that you keep the pressure on the bow the same, meaning that your arm weight, the amount of weight that you're putting onto the string is not varying. Because if, if you vary it, pretty soon your bow is bouncing. And you don't want your bow to bounce. You want to keep that pressure, maintain that pressure steady so that there's no chance for it to unevenly start bouncing. With that, okay? Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, so we use our wrist. Now, for, quick, for the quickest string crossings, I actually recommend using your fingers. So this curling motion, okay? So like this. Use your fingers. Just try to avoid using your wrist for anything other than what you absolutely need the wrist for. For example, up bow staccato, you need your wrist. For uh, string crossings, you generally don't. Unless it ends up being that weird little speed where it's too fast for your arm to move up, but too slow for your fingers to accurately measure because it's, you don't want your fingers to measure a big distance because if it's doing this, it's way easier for you to screw it up. Whereas if your arm is bouncing up and down too fast, it's also too hard, then your wrist sort of takes over a little bit, like in between there. But other than that, other than that weird, like I call it maybe the blind spot for the wrist where you absolutely need it. You're either going to use your arm for the slower string crossings or your fingers for the fast ones. Okay? It's going to take practice, but that is, uh, that is what, what my methodology is. Okay, good. Um, so from slow to fast, you use arm to fingers. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's right. So if you want to put it into a formula, slow, as you go from slow to fast, you go from arm to fingers. And at some point during that uh, speed up, your wrist is going to, to be the one that, that does it, but that point is really very small. So generally you don't want to use your wrist, but if it so happens that it's in between your, your comfort zone for your fingers and your comfort zone for your arm, then your wrist can do it. And generally speaking also, I, not very many pieces have that in, in, uh, in, ex, in a long period of time. So uh, you generally do not have to rely, rely on your wrist for this part, okay? Um, other questions before we close up this lesson? I hope this has been useful for you. I hope that um, the demonstrations that I've done and the sound quality is good enough that you can understand what it is that we're doing so that you can take it to your own practice room. Next time you're practicing Preludium and Allegro or uh, whatever piece that you're playing, make sure that you start off nice and slow, make some gaps, shorten those gaps, use your arm on the slow ones, use your fingers on the fast ones, and don't worry about the wrist. The wrist will take over if it's that kind of weird in between speed, but generally it's just either arm or your wrist. And also that your um, arm only has to really memorize four different positions and then sort of those half, like halfway in between positions for the faster string crossings, but generally it's just those four. Those, so G, D, A, E. Memorize where your arm is without using a wrist, without using your fingers. Okay, why my world clock seems wrong. I'll have to check on that. Um, 
Yeah, maybe it is. I don't know. I'll, I'll look. Um, right now, my time says 435, so it should be 1635 on YY's World. That should be the time. Speed equals distance from arm to fingers. Um, speed actually generally is the, is the amount of time it takes for you to start and stop the note. So if it's a long amount of time to start and stop, then we're talking that it's a slow speed. If there's a short amount of time between notes, then uh, we're talking fast speed. That's really what it comes down to, is the amount of time it takes to complete a note from start to finish. If that time is short, it's fast. If the time is long, it's slow. Um, do you still kind of stop the bow to do the crossing? Absolutely, and in fact, even in performance, you're stopping the bow. You have to, otherwise you're going to hear the note in between because like we, like we mentioned before, you always hit that string. You're always gonna hit that string when you're string crossing because uh, you don't want your bow to jump from one to the other. That's a myth. You should not be jumping between them. It's just rolling them, and your bow has to be stopped so that you don't hear the sound on the, the string that you don't want to hear. So it's moving, stop, cross, moving, stop, cross, moving. That's why we have that exercise. Okay. Oh, for adjacent strings. Um, for the adjacent strings, you technically don't really have to stop the bow, only to change directions. <laughs> So adjacent string crossings are actually a lot easier, particularly that your arm stays in the same spot. And you're just kind of doing little circles with your arm, with your, with your fingers. At those speeds. And then when you do it really slowly, now I'm actually moving my arm. And then when I go fast, and then it's just my fingers helping and the arm is in the same spot. Okay? Uh, yeah, so you can see how this basic technique can get com it can get complicated pretty quickly, um, especially when you're talking about pieces that switch between one to the other very quickly, or you, know, you got string crossings that suddenly turn to spiccato, turn to, to chords, to you know retaking the bow and then suddenly going back to it. Um, focus on the basics, get those down, and then as the more complex techniques come up, try to combine these basic ones to make your complex techniques. Every technique that's complex is made up of basic techniques. And this is a basic technique. All right, if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and um, email me or post it on a comment on the YouTube video that I'm going to post of this. And um, so you guys know I am going on vacation for the next couple of weeks. I will be bringing a computer with me, but it's gonna be just a, like a, a, a tablet. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do lessons during that time. I will post on YY's World when the next lesson will be. Uh, it may not be for another couple of weeks just because of the fact that I'm traveling. But if that's the case, then I'll, I'll talk to Andrew and see if he can do a lesson in my stead. Maybe he can do them on Saturday at 4. Does this time work okay for you guys? I noticed that we don't have as many people as we did before, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather focus on the those of you who actually want to be here. So uh, hopefully you guys are okay with the, the small amount of people that are present. I assume you are. I guess it's more like one-on-one -on -one in this case. So... Um, Upo staccato, yeah, that uh, that'll be a lesson. It'll be a, it's a very advanced technique, so you know we'll see how the lessons go. I want to focus on basic stuff first, but uh, but yeah, we'll see. Um, and I'll start brainstorming on the next topic. Although you guys are welcome to email me if you guys come up with ideas for what we should talk about next time. And uh, if I'm not going to be here, I'll I'll tell Andrew, and then he can um, do a lesson on that. Okay, well, I really appreciate your time. I think it's kind of fun to break these techniques down into, into bite-sized pieces that are not too scary. So go practice, stop your bow, get your string crossings clean. And at some point, I'd love to hear some of you play. So if you have access to uh, a webcam and you want to post a video on YouTube and just you know email me, I'm more than happy to take a look at that because you guys have been coming to these lessons um, and I will, uh, I'll take a look at those videos for you. Okay? That's an, that's an invitation I'll leave to, to you guys who are, have, have become our, our regulars. Um, I don't think I have time to do everybody's, but for you guys, I do. So, all right. Yes, you're very welcome. I hope that this helps. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. So look at ywiseworld.com and I will post the next uh, lesson time. See you guys later.